Stone Angel Brewing's Red Handed Irish Red Ale. Named after the Red Hand of Ulster, an iconic image used across the province in family crests and town coats of arms. And is a symbol of defiance. Hmm. Medium bodied malt focused beer, initial sweetness, subtle toasted green, caramel notes, finished with roasted dryness and a slight hot bitterness. That sounds interesting. So today I'm going to start with a few that I ordered as usual, but I've also got a couple of things that have been sent in from, uh, from out in the world that we'll take a look at too. Kind of excited to get to those, but I'll save them till the end as usual. We have microchip RW clip. Hmm. Well, that's kind of neat. Just uh, some more test clips. What all is in here? Some wires and some paper and the clips themselves. Operating skills. Insert DuPont. Push on to... Okay. Open to about 80 degrees and... Yeah. Let's just see what they do here. Oh, do I need the instructions to figure out how to open the package? Oh, no. Okay, let's grab one. So the DuPont pin goes onto the back of here, yeah. And then, oh wow, do you see that? Maybe you need a different background. That's cool. And super tiny, too. Universal Chip IC Test Clip Socket Adapter Programmer SOP, SOIC, TSOP, MSOP, and SSOP. Um, I got this from Sam Love, uh, and I did not pay anywhere near this $19 plus uh, 2 bucks Canadian shipping that they're currently charging. Back when I bought it, probably at auction, I got it for $2.44. But what do they have to say about it? Unnecessary to weld, diameter of the clip is 0.13 millimeters. It's covered with isolation, so no conductivity. Well, I mean, it's not completely covered up front here, but yeah, it's got these uh, nice insulating sleeves here. Um, pinch the tube by fingers and push back. Micro clip, sure, whatever. Um, we, we, we can see how they work on my workbench. But there we go. There it is on there, and it's obviously on there. Let me just grab a magnifier and get in closer. Actually, I'm going to put a couple more on, and then we'll get in closer. Okay, so there's three of them grabbed onto legs of that surface mount chip. There's plenty of clearance between them, actually. That's cool. I think that's probably the best that I've uh, got so far in my uh, bag of tricks for clipping onto small ICs like that. Initially, I got these ones, which are good for dip devices and normal component leads but uh well they're they're even a little tight on dip legs but you know, normal component leads are not uh not a problem on then there's these ones which i think will go on to there yeah it will but the shaft is so much wider and it kind of obscures the next pin over Again, that's probably good on a dip device. Yeah, you could get a bunch of them in there without a problem. But for this, wow, those are really good. I like that. Yes, I do like that one. That's very nice. Next in, Electronics IC. Oh, okay. These look like battery holders, coin cell battery holders. I'm assuming those are 2032s, which would be this one. It looks sort of like it, but yeah, that's what it is all right for the 2032. How do I get that out of there? I guess just like that. Okay, that works. 10 pieces CR20252032 3 volt button coin cell battery socket holder box case ROHS new got this one from deep learnings yet another seller that i've bought from a few times in the past i paid a dollar 38 canadian and there wasn't any shipping on it when i bought it see they've changed 
that seems to be happening right now. Um, right now is like second half of April, 2020. And I've noticed an awful lot of things have started to have shipping charges on them that are actually more than the item's worth. Bit of a disturbing trend. Not much to say here. Uh, 20 millimeter diameter, which is the two zero part of the part number and the 32 and the 25 are the thickness of the battery. Um, yeah, not much else to say. It's for a three volt lithium battery, 10 pieces. And the third thing in today is, doesn't say, fine, be like that. Aha, soldering iron tips. Specifically, soldering iron tips for this T12 iron here that I was graciously gifted some months ago. Um, it came from the factory with that large chisel tip on it, and that's a little bit thick for doing circuit board work. So I got these two with finer tips on them. So these two are both this shape of t tip which I prefer. I know a lot of people prefer different uh, shape of tips, but I've gotten used to this shape over the years and it's just the one that I like. And the two sizes that I got, one of them looks like it's about one or one and a half millimeters maybe. And the other one looks like it's two and a half or thereabouts, maybe three millimeters. That should up my game significantly. And now that I've got those, I will be able to, uh, well, I, I'm ready, I guess, to do a full kind of a shakedown on this guy and look at it a little bit more carefully and start using it for real. That'll be nice. One piece T12 soldering iron tip for soldering rework station PTBBGR uh, from Green Tea Time 2016. I got two different sizes. I got the BCF2 size, which I paid $4.27 for. And I also got the BC1 size, which I paid $4.20 for. So again, things have changed. The listing has updated and the price has gone up significantly since I bought it back in months ago. When was that? January, I guess. So these tips are available in a wide variety of sizes and... It was a little bit challenging finding uh, pages that had descriptions of the shape and size of the tips. Um, I knew I didn't want any of the really big ones or the conical shaped ones because I just don't like those. Or the bent tip ones, kind of like that one in the middle there. I think that's for drag soldering. But I'm told that the kind of chisel shaped one that I've already got can do drag soldering as well. I don't know. It's not really something that I do very much. Anyway, there's a bunch of these listings that have a bunch of different tip sizes if you're interested. Um, I'm going to link to this one, but as you can see, the prices have changed pretty significantly. So search around as always. I'm not even going to pretend that I didn't accidentally open this with the camera pause. Sometimes I just get ahead of myself a little bit. Uh, so this is a gift that I was sent from Universal Solder in Yorkton, Saskatchewan. He is a small Canadian company who sells a lot of the same modules and stuff that we uh, we typically use in Arduino world and whatnot. Um, he sent me some stuff before, like this cute little uh, USB blinky lights thing. Um, but this kit of parts is a bit of a surprise, or it would have been if I hadn't opened it off camera accidentally. So he has sent me... A brand new Wemos D1 mini base 4 channel Wi Fi and I2C relay module. And parts for an Arduino Nano based PLC kit. PLC is programmable logic controller normally, um, which is kind of an industrial controller type of thing. He's got a demo sketch on his website, which is all very cool too. So uh, these two kits look really interesting. I'm. Uh, I'm going to go into them in a little bit more depth. Uh, I'm going to give each one of its own its own kit build video because I like doing kit build videos. But I'll just take a quick sneak peek at them first. So this one he calls a Smarter Relays board. So this one has four relays on it with outputs to these little screw terminals here. There's a D1 Mini goes on there. And... 
uh, IC or a couple of ICs go on one there and one opposite the D1 Mini. I'm thinking or maybe underneath the underneath it and yeah because there's header pins that'll lift it up okay so i'm guessing that one of those is probably going to be opto isolators like a, i don't know yeah we'll look at it later we'll, we'll look at it in depth when i actually do it but that's a nicely designed board nice black solder mask on it and gold pins looks really classy okay so that's that one comes with the d1 mini and a bunch of parts and components and things as kits do. And the other one is these three bags here. A um, bunch of scoop terminals there, all the small components. That's another thing I noted in both of them actually. This one too. He's got a package and a double sided board so you can, or a double sided bag. So you can take out uh, some of the components and the rest of it is all still sealed in there and doesn't get lost on your workbench, as tends to happen. So this one is called the Mega 328 PLC. Comes with a Nano, um, a little voltage converter module, and this classy looking board. And this one has six relays and the screw terminals for it. Um, and then some screw terminals for some analog inputs, some other analog inputs and, the uh, digital IO up there, uh, 12 volt, uh, power in, uh, ground 10 volt power out. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, over here we got I2C connection. Um, and then the nano goes on there and a couple of ICs. And a CR2032 for backup battery. That's clever. Okay. So he's going for a very industrial kind of a feel on this thing. That's neat. And again, nice classy black solder mask with the gold, uh, gold uh, pads. Those are going to be some fun kits to put together, I think. Can Arduino 4 channel Wi Fi relay with I2C and Wemos D1 Mini, depending on options. Between 2196 and 3696. I'm assuming that's assembled, yes or no. Yeah. So there's what it looks like built up. Oh, that's neat. He's used those uh, stackable female headers too. And yeah, there's that chip hiding underneath there. So you can actually put a shield on top of that and make use of any of the unused pins for something else. That's clever. Um, looks like some jumper settings or. Uh, selectable stuff for the relays possibly active high or active low i don't know um we'll have to look more carefully oh hey yeah being an esp8266 based thing in the we must d1 mini it can run its own little web server on the thing so uh that's pretty neat can arduino plc mega 328 electronics diy kit arduino compatible uh, price between 36 and a half and 56 and a half bucks, depending on whether they want it assembled or not. And there is what it looks like assembled. So again, the six relays, each one's got its own little LED. There's a crystal there. Battery. Oh, is that a real-time clock? Uh, 13 oh, I think that's a real-time clock. Okay, that's what that battery's for. Neat. And uh, then... I'm guessing, again, probably one or two of these ICs is, is buffering and driving the relays. There we go. Uh, so we've got four analog inputs, uh, 0 to 10 volt, 10-bit 10 resolution. Hmm. So maybe one of these chips on here is an uh, I2C analog to digital converter. Okay. That also explains why there's 10-volt output on one of these uh, screw terminals as well. It's got four digital inputs that can take up to 12 volts. Okay. So he's he's really designed this to work with uh, more industrial type systems. Because that's closer to what those voltages are. And last but not least, from my buddy, another maker in Florida. Um, he That's the name of his YouTube channel down there. He's He's got all kinds of clever stuff that he's done. Um, a lot more of his projects are software-based than mine. 
because he's actually good at you know that softer stuff. How do you get into this thing? Oh, here we go. Now he didn't tell me what he was sending. He intentionally didn't. So I have absolutely no idea what's in here. And there's a whole bunch of stuff. And note. So what's in the... <laughs> Why is a guy in Florida sending me five bucks? Uh, he said, I was one of the first maker channels he subscribed to. And he appreciated that I... Oh, wow. I, I don't mind answering your questions at all. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. When he started doing YouTube, I was... <laughs> don't call me a real YouTuber. I'm just a guy hacking around in his basement. But I appreciate it nonetheless. Um, so, there's a bunch of different... Um, Olmyx ESP32 board. Um, yeah, and if I need code for it, I'm definitely going to call you because... I don't know jack shit about coding. Um, <laughs> he found a Canadian $5 bill in it. So he's buying me a beer. <laughs> Thanks, man. That is awesome. Um, uh, he's the sawn off, which is, I think one of those Wi-Fi relay or Wi-Fi AC relay things, a nightlight thing. Um, some lenses focus. Oh, wow. Let's just do this. Huh? Oh, this even wow, dude, I don't know what to say. I haven't even, wow. Um, okay. So that is, I think what, that's probably that sawn off Wi-Fi nightlight with motion detector, obviously. Okay. That he suggested might be a teardown. Oh no, that's not the sawn off. That's, that's something else, but that's definitely a teardown. Um, Wi-Fi smart switch works with Alexa, Google assistant, if then, then, then nest, um, bunch of other things. A lot of these things have an ESP 8266 inside them. Um, and some people have taken to reprogramming them, which in itself could be interesting. Just quickly. Ah, come on. You should open easier than that. There we go. Okay, it's the it's the brother of it. It's the ESP8285. But it's still the espresso uh, chip. Okay. Wow, that should be interesting to play with. If nothing else, I'll actually use it for its real purpose, but it might be fun to hack around with too. What else we got in here? We got some little LED bezels. Okay. Um, just put a five millimeter LED in there and screw it onto a front panel. That's slick. A bag of those. That's cool. A key switch. Hmm. Prevent people from turning stuff on, stuff off and on. But I think he also knows that I like to pick locks. <laughs> Omex dev board. It's ESP32 based. So we've got an ESP32 there. We've got Ethernet there. A couple of relays. There's a theme here of Wi-Fi controllable relays. Power in. Um, no, infrared receiver. LED of some sort. That says micro SD. Okay. A couple of pushy buttons. Uh, some kind of an external connection. Is that a programming header? Maybe. Uh, crystal. Some other fairly involved little chips. In. Wow. Oh, man. Look at the thickness of those tracks. That's designed for current handling. Okay. Uh, five volt input. Therm one. Okay, and a temperature sensor can plug into that. Does that say CAN bus? That thing can do all manner of funkiness. Okay. And then there's all the GPIO connections over there and mapped out for you. Okay. Wowzers. I don't know that I have any ESP32 boards yet. No, I don't think I do. I've got one on order, um, but a very different one than this. So this should be interesting to play with. Okay, what else have we got here? A bunch of ICs. 74HC132. 
It's a quad NAND gate. Okay. What else have we got here? Oh, some those same LED bezels only in three millimeter. Ha! <laughs> cool. And a what is that? A three watt LED. Okay. Nice and bright. I like big bright LEDs. That's cool. Uh, what is that? That is a level shifter. A four channel level shifter. Okay. Um, for when you've got uh, something that talks 3.3 volts, like the ESP uh, boards, and you want to talk to a 5 volt uh, module, or vice versa, if you've got a 5 volt, mod, uh, 5 volt uh, microcontroller, and you want to talk to 3.3 volt accessories. And that is another level shift there. Okay. Um, what else haven't we looked at here? That's parts of the sawn off. Uh, how does this open? <laughs> That's actually fairly sharp. Cool. It's a slick little knife. I guess designed as everyday carry just to, to be on there. And the perfect thing for somebody that likes to lock pick too. Just a <laughs> neat novelty. Cool. Uh, what is that? Oh, that's, that's that. Okay. And this says glass question mark. Uh, he said something about there being a lens in here. So I'm guessing that might be what it is. It is two lenses. Wow. Where'd that big LED go? That would be the kind of a thing you'd mount in front of there. Just to focus the beam a little bit. Neat. Those might actually be glass too. It's kind of hard to tell. I'm not going to take them out of the package right now. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even notice that. It was hiding underneath there. He also sent me a little four inch cutting mat or, and knowing that he was sending it to Canada, he sent me a metric one too. That's excellent. I think it's actually the same color as that one. So that, oh, that's a good thick cutting mat too. Never hurts to have a little portable cutting mat. Um, just throw in your toolbox or something. I had one a little bit bigger than this in my, uh, in the toolbox I used to take to the model railroad club back when I used to do that quite often. And it was just a handy little thing to have. I will get mileage out of this thing too. Wow. <laughs> just such an embarrassment of riches. This is awesome. Um, so I'm going to go through the things that I bought first, just quickly. Uh, the... Soldering iron tips took 36 days to get here. The little chip tester clips took six and a half weeks to get here. Wow. And these battery holders, uh, CR2032 battery holders took 27 days to get here, which is not too bad. Um, those are all going to show up at some point in the future. These soldering tips you're going to see in this, in this, uh, iron quite often in the future. I'm sure <sighs> these two kits, uh, that uh, Universal Solder sent me for review and just uh, just to take a look at. Thank you. I will get to those in the next uh, couple of weeks. I'll start building one of them and the other one a few weeks later, no doubt. And all this stuff from from another maker, um, you know that stuff's going to show up in future projects and just for tinkering around here and whatnot and teardowns. And I'm moderately intimidated by this board, but. Uh, but he's a good guy and I know he's going to help me. I, he's probably already got some stuff on his YouTube channel, link in the description, um, about that type of board. Uh, and actually he's got a lot of good stuff on his channel already. Um, some of the things he's done on his channels are things like puzzles for escape rooms or sort of large scale electronic games uh, and things like that. And just general tinkery stuff it's uh and he's also uh I, I he's been tinkering around for a long time with his microcontroller stuff i think he's a professional programmer i'm not sure uh or an it guy or something in that range but i i know he's an awesome program and he's actually got a second channel as well called develop with dan which is mostly programming tutorials hell i'll put a link down below for that too obviously i'm going to put a link to universal solder um, and links to each of these boards individually down amongst the links to everything else. It's going to be a big, uh, big description area this time. 
Anyway, thanks to all you guys for watching. Thanks to my Patreon supporters for helping me buy the things that I do buy for, for the mailbags and for my projects and for the channel. And they buy me a beer once in a while. <laughs> thanks to another maker for buying me a beer. I mean, literally, I, I didn't, that was beyond what I expected. Um, yeah, comments and questions down below as usual. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.